If we can get above this 277 level, then look how much room we have. The next measure of potential move is 284. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody had a great Monday. Hope everybody had a great uh, weekend, solid trading session, and hopefully you are healthy enough to enjoy uh, the fruits of what this wonderful life uh, is offering us. So let's talk about the tape, right? Uh, last week, 5% uh, moves uh, all across the board. We talked about it on uh, the weekend update. We talked about levels. Uh, and I think Kyler put in kind of the intro of what we talked about on the video of that 277 number uh, on the cues. We'll get to that in a second. The most important part is what continues to happen, right? And let's look at the big picture, not just from the day-to-day but the big picture. Obviously, what we do on the day-to-day -day is very, very important, but we have to understand where we are on, on the totality. And this is kind of where we are. So we're going into uh, the meat, right? The meat of the, the technology earnings sector. Tomorrow, you got, uh, matter of fact, 25% of the whole S&P 500 reports this week. But tomorrow, you got Microsoft and Google, right? Microsoft, Google, uh, uh, Visa, Chipotle, GE, uh, tons, tons, uh, you know, before the market opens, after the market closes. And the next day you have Meta and the following day you have Apple and, and, and Google and Mike, all over the place, right? So this is a very, very important week. But keep this in mind. Two things are happening right now. Number one, the market continues to negate, right? Negate bad news. Uh, oh, we saw that all of last week. We saw that all of uh, every single headline that dropped last week, including a you know, pretty aggressive reversal of the CPI uh, two weeks ago, right? Which was very, very important. But more important is what are we doing off those headlines? Those headlines that would have rattled the market uh, only a couple of weeks ago are kind of being, you know, just kind of death, death, and, death and dumb and blind. Like nobody's e even bothered by it anymore. Matter of fact, you woke up this morning, last night the futures were surging, right? Surging overnight, Sunday night futures. NASDAQ futures are up like 200 plus. Everything was super strong. You wake up this morning, you see a headline that the Hang Sang is down 6%. Well, normally, you know, when you see a headline down 6% and you're in a market, and we, I think we could all agree, we've been in a, in a bear side, uh, sell side market for a while now, you turn around and you say, wow, these stocks must be really getting destroyed. Some stocks were getting destroyed. The China stocks were getting destroyed. Uh, there was a, uh, apparently uh, they do not want, I guess the Chinese people do not want, like they have a choice, uh, that President Xi, Xi, whatever the hell that you pronounce his name, right? Apparently he is going to be in his third term. Uh, the, obviously the Chinese stocks didn't like that after the close, uh, after uh, the future session, you had Alibaba. I mean, everything was just, just got destroyed. Alibaba, Baidu, I mean, you don't have to go through all the names. Baidu, PDD, they all got slammed today, right? Every single Chinese stock, NTES, uh, they all got murdered today, little one, one by one. And it really does show you how different the market is today, right? Today, yesterday, versus how we were two weeks ago. And news like this would, would, would have rattled the markets. You know, we would, we would have been down three, four, 500 points. Again, 6% move in the Hang Seng is going to, you figure it's, it's going to spill over some. No, not so much, not so much at all. You saw this morning, uh, you know, stocks started by around seven, you know, 7.15 in the morning. You started seeing stocks started, you know, getting off, way off their lows. Uh, Microsoft slowly was started going green. We'll get to the pivots in a second. Apple and stuff like that. So there was no fear, and it, it was like nothing happened. And you know the market started waking up. Not everything, right? Not everything, but the market started waking up today, and a lot of stocks started getting aggressive. A lot of stocks started taking out uh, last week's ranges, and we had a very very strong day. If you look up right now, you have the, the Nasdaq up 100 points of the day, the Dow up another 400 points, and the more important part. And again, we don't know what's going to happen for the rest of the week on earnings. But the most important part that we do know is, is that 277 level that we talked about on the weekend update. The bulls got above this 277.21 area. They, then they got above this linear regression line of 277.80. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. And this is the highest close in this whole formation. Now, what can derail this market? 
right? What could derail this little bounce that we are enjoying? Now, keep an eye. This is a bounce. Don't think for a second anybody has an idea. In every single video, I try to remind everybody how much of bigger idiots we all are. We all have an opinion. We all want to be smart. We all want to be better looking. We want to have bigger penises, right? All that stuff. Even you too, ladies. But the point is nobody cares, right? Price action trumps everything, no pun intended. And the most important part is I urge everybody that try to kind of just ram it down everybody's throat, that's what I said, that we wanna take it one day at a time, okay? One day at a time, one tra trade at a time. Because again, the big picture is all of this is happening is not the first time. We saw this reaction right here, we saw this reaction right here, and everybody kept on saying, Here's the bottom, here's the bottom, here's the bottom, and then all of a sudden, here's a new bottom, and here's a new bottom. So don't get ahead of yourself. That's the most important part. Don't start looking at where we're going to be three months from now. I try to kind of remind uh, the viewers every single day, and it's very, very important. All of this is happening, again, below the 50-day moving average. So enjoy the day. Enjoy the research that could lead you into the day. Because remember, you're not chasing momentum. That's not what we do as traders. We don't chase momentum. We look at the data. We look at the research and prepare ourselves that that night's research will be momentum for the next day once it confirms. So by the time it hits scanners and some random guy from Joe Schmo, greatbigdigs.com turns around and goes, Wow, man, this thing is ripping. That's always selling stock, right? You're selling stock into that rip because again, you're, you're, you're trying to get ahead of the, uh, of the crowd. That's the edge, right? All these areas are not areas of random points uh, of interest. They're random points of interest. That's the whole point. There's nothing random about these lottos, these areas. These are points that have to be confirmed and the bulls did it once again, a tremendous job today. They confirmed these areas and now you have uh, two, well, um, you have the highs from October the 5th which was, man, it was 19 days ago, almost almost a month. You got these 283, 284 levels. So if the market doesn't derail tomorrow, right? And again, a lot of the bigger name earnings will be tomorrow uh, after the close, at least on, on the technology names. But if we don't derail on earnings, and again, these are some of the non-beta names that are reporting, uh, I, think be, I think before the market open, let me just get the names so I don't butcher any of them. Uh, let's see here, let's see here, let's see here. So tomorrow we got, before the open, you got GE, you got Visa, right? Uh, financials, obviously a big deal. You got General Motors, you got Coca-Cola, again, exposure. Coca-Cola, big exposure uh, to China. You have, you have Triple M, you have UPS. Uh, so it's very, very important, you know, those names will set the tone. But if the market does not sell off on those names and technology, again, just shrugs off kind of negative, a negative uh, uh, stigma, then again, there's a chance we can confirm today's channel and start building all the way back up to this 283, 284 earnings, uh, 283, 284 supply. Now keep this in mind, tomorrow we can't ignore what's happening tomorrow. You know, you're going to have after the close Microsoft, right? Arguably the top three most important influential companies uh, on, on the board in the technology space, right? You got Google, okay? Google and Microsoft are kind of a big deal. Microsoft is gonna set the tone with all the software players. Google is gonna set the tone with all the ad players, right? Uh, all the, the metas of the world, the Twitters of the world, the Snapchat, I guess they still, they still matter. TikTok, did you guys see what was going on on TikTok today, right? There, were, there was rumors back and forth that there was supposed to be some sort of sanctions. Yeah, I didn't hear any of that news, but again, this chatter, if it's on social media, it must be true. Nothing really came out, but again, you did see intraday spikes on a number of names uh, that were going to benefit, for example, like a, like a meta, a Facebook. If, for example, if the United States ever does uh, put a sanction on TikTok, again, which is a Chinese company, well, Instagram Reels, right? They own Instagram. Instagram Reels is exactly the same thing as TikTok, and they're thinking everybody's going to kind of go away from TikTok, go into Instagram Reels. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not, not really... Uh, I don't really follow that that much closely, but that's kind of the narrative that at least was spun today. But overall, uh, bulls continue to do a, a phenomenal job. If we can just confirm, right? If we can just confirm uh, today's channels, again, we might have an extension of this run into this 283, 284, but just again, I don't wanna be a ne negative Nancy or put a sour, uh, sour taste in anybody's mouth, but just remember, all this is happening underneath the 50 day moving average. So at any time, at any time, they could always pull the plug and that's very important to understand the levels and understand the dynamics of a macro of a whole. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Again, not everything went. It, it was, if you look at the board, there was a little bit of a mixed bag, but the leaders continued to lead. 
the Qs uh, did confirm a very, very big level. Even Tesla, that had some, you know, a pretty pretty good pivot here at the open today. Even Tesla kind of reversed it just to show you that they really are uh, negating, you know, negating all negative stuff. So let's talk about it. This was definitely uh, at least the first really good trade of the day. Uh, 202, which was the earnings low. If it builds below, can flush. It only went down to 198 and change. I was very surprised. Uh, again, I was, I was happy with the result. There's nothing wrong with the trade. I really did think we were going to get a bigger uh, a bigger expansion of that channel but it does again kind of correlates to what we've been talking about they're negating any bad news uh, and if you saw this morning you had um i believe they cut their um i believe they cut their forecast for china it would make sense right especially the china and they couldn't get the stock really down and the stock did rally uh, really rallied what about uh, eight nine dollars uh, off its lows. So it was pretty uh, pretty impressive. So Nvidia, if it opens below twenty five, use that as a daily pivot. If not, one twenty six needs to build. Uh, I still like the macro area. Nvidia, you know, went up to like tw a little, a little about to twenty seven. Uh, nice move there. Qs, this is the big one here from the macro point of view that concerns everybody. Two seventy seven twenty one was last week's highs we talked about in the video. Two seventy seven eighty pre market highs and daily linear regression line. It needs to build. So here were the cues, and that's the whole point of where we started. Here's the 277.21. Here was the linear regression line, 277.80s. It finally got above that and went to the 279.40s. And again, now today's highs needs to confirm for tomorrow. But again, big, big move there. Uh, Apple, again, they're running them into uh, their earnings on Thursday, 148. 148.20 needs to build. Here is Apple, right? Here's 148.20 needs to build. Uh, Apple went to 150 and change. They might run this thing up into the 151s ahead of earnings if the market continues. Uh, ILMN never uh, got above the range. Uh, Tesla, Netflix never got above this 291, 292 range. Uh, Microsoft, uh, here is Microsoft, 244 needs to build. Definitely the strongest one uh, on the board uh, running into their earnings for tomorrow evening, right? Oops. Here's Microsoft, right? Took out this, uh, took out this 44, traded right to supply here, uh, almost a 48. Nice move on Microsoft. Starbucks, small move, uh, 83 held twice for builds below can flush. Only went down about 60 cents. Nothing really there as well. Uh, Meta, nice push again. Here was the, you know, here was the chatter, right? Well, if they shut off, you know, if they sanction uh, TikTok, you know, Meta, it's gonna go. Well, well that's exactly what it did. Uh, Meta 132.20 needs to build. You know, there was an ugly reversal in the middle of the day, but uh, Meta did get above uh, the 32.20. You can see it here. Got above the 32.20, traded all the way up to 33.50 before them turn around and say, well, wait a minute, there's no news coming out above that. So then obviously it reversed course. Uh, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. So going into tomorrow, uh, there's definitely names I like. Um, you guys remember the trade from last Friday? Uh, that that when Netflix took out the earnings highs, right? You guys remember that when Netflix took out the earnings highs? Look at ISRG for tomorrow, right? It trades thinner, definitely trades thinner, only trade 2 million shares for the day. But if ISRG can confirm its earnings highs, hey, this thing might wake up here. So definitely keep an eye on ISRG. Let me give you guys a couple of other names that look good. Biogen uh, setting up here as well. Had this really big move came in now it's putting in this channel if it can just get above this channel for tomorrow maybe this thing wakes really up keep an eye on that as well uh dxcm had a, a good earnings report you know it felt like a, a year ago it was only uh, you know three weeks ago but if it can just get above the supply zone here you see the supply zone here if it could just get above the supply zone start building above 100 maybe this thing finally wakes up so keep an eye on that as well and obviously obviously i'm watching uh, all these uh, technology names as well, just in case they start expanding uh, their channels. So that's it, everybody. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Stay healthy. Most important, stay healthy, stay smiling. And as we say every single day, stay in business. God bless, everybody. I'll see you